Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi guy. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you some Linux basics, and this is the second tutorial in my series of Linux basics. Uh, email me if you'd like me to continue doing them, and I, what I'm going to do is show you some useful Linux commands that will help you navigate the terminal. So, what you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi that's connected to a monitor, and um, you're going to need a keyboard, but not necessarily a mouse, and you're going to need a SD card with the latest Raspbian distro installed. However, Linux is, as I said, multi-platform, and so most of the commands in my tutorial will probably work if you have a, a computer running, say, Ubuntu, or if you're using a different operating system for your Raspberry Pi, like Arch Linux, which I might do a tutorial on soon. So, and what else? You might need to be internet connected, you probably might need to be internet connected for some of the commands, though uh, it, for the majority of them you're going to be gr you're going to be fine. So let's get started. So boot up your Raspberry Pi and log in. I'm just using the default Pi user, but I'm using this on my Windows PC via SSH. If you don't know what SSH is, Google it and watch my other video where I explain what SSH is and how to use it. And um, the first command that I'm going to teach you is called manual. Now manual is really useful and it does exactly what it says it prints a manual page for any command that you want. Say I've got ls, which is a simple command, but say I don't know what it means. If I do man, which is how you use the man, and press do ls, press enter, you'll see that it, it comes up with a page explaining what ls is, the name of it, the synopsis, the description, and you press q to quit. Say so do man, man. Now I've got the manual page for man, and as you can see, man is an interface, to the online reference manuals. So I'll press Q to exit that. Next thing I'm going to teach you is this really useful shortcut for when changing directories and using long file names. So say I want to change into the rpi.gpio um, .gpio directory, but as you can see, there's that's quite a long directory name, and there's human error. You might make a mistake, and that's really annoying. So say I do change directory and then R, P, and then you press the tab button on your keyboard. And as you can see, it just predictive, predictive te test. Not sure what the official name is, but I just call it predictive test text. And press enter and you see you've got a, a nice little predictive text that means that you skip any errors that you might make. Now we do LS, LS, then we'll see that we've changed directories. Now, as you just saw there, I I used caps lock, caps lock, and typed in ls, and you'll see that um, it comes up with command not found. This is because everything in the terminal is capital caps uh, sensitive. So if I type in any command that needs to be in lowercase letters, in high, in uppercase letters, and um, press enter, then you're going to find that it's not going to work, and you'll have a error returned. Next thing I'm going to teach you is something called MKDIR, spelt like this. Now basically, this what this does is makes a directory. Now, if you don't know what a directory is, then watch my other video where I explain loads of Linux basics. But basically, a directory is um, what Windows calls a folder. It's where you keep all your files. And they're really useful, and they're how you organize everything. So MKDIR. Let's say I want to make a directory called my directory. I'm not sure I spelled that right, but never mind. Whenever I do ls, we'll see I've made my directory here. But say I want to remove my directory. Now, uh, there's two remove functions. There's a remove function that I'm about to teach you in a minute called rm. And then there's the rmdir function, which allows you to remove directories. Now, if I try rm my tab directory, you see, cannot remove my directory because it's a directory and rm, the remove function, doesn't allow you to remove directories. So you have to use a specialized function called rmdir and then the name, my directory. Press enter. See, no, it should be no error, error message, no success message either. Type ls and you'll see that it's gone. So, I'm just going to change back into the home directory there. Next thing I'm going to teach you how to do is remove files. So let's say 
what can I remove from here? Let's have a look. Ellis. I'm going to remove the Raspberry Pi logo.jpg. So I just type in rm r a tab and that particular texts it. So that's just going to remove the logo. Press enter. No error, no success, but you've removed it and we can test it by doing this. ls and you'll see that it's gone. So the next thing that I'm going to teach you how to do is copy your files. Now there's multiple ways of um, copying files and and um, I'm just going to teach you personally what I think is my, the best way because um, this will this way there's multiple ways and there's a simpler way than this. However, this way will prompt you um, before a file is overwritten. So what it is is CP, which stands for don't know copy probably, and then the file's name, and then after that. Um, the new file that you want to copy it to. So say I want to copy config dot text and then I want to after that you press space and then I want to copy it to a file called con config one dot txt press enter and you'll see that I've made that. However if if I already have config one then this, what this command is not going to allow you to do, it's not going to allow, it's, not, it's, it's just going to overwrite config1. So that's why it's better to use this command, which is cp minus i, and then the name of your file and the file you want to copy it to. So config.txt, and then I want to copy this to config1.txt. Now, if you don't specify the file that you want to, to copy to, then it's just going to make you a new file. So press enter. CP, do you want to overwrite config1.txt? Press enter. Yes. So, we're going to have one more, one more command, and this is the kill process command. Now, you, with the Raspberry Pi, you're not going to have too many of these, but if you download lots of software, and you want to you want to kill some of it because it's taking up too much memory on your Pi. Remember, you've got a limited amount of memory on the Pi. You've got a new one. You've only got 512 megs, and you've got an old one like me, and you have 256. But the command that you're going to need to use is kill all, and then that, and then no, sorry, kill all, and then the name of your program, whatever's running. And that's the way to kill files. Not files, processes, I mean. Now, I said that was going to be the last one, I lied. Well, there's going to be one more, and this is the ping command. Spelled P I N G. You don't know how to spell ping. Let's just do the manual page on ping. Now, as you can see, um, in quite a lot of technical jargon, it's just trying to explain that ping pings a web server, whatever one that you specify, it pings it, it sends out packages, and if the web server's on and operating, then it will send the packages back, and that way you can tell whether you're successfully connected to the internet or if this server's actually up. So say I want to ping Google, which is obviously always going to be up, so www.google.co.uk. You can either use the uh, the web address or you can use the IP address. Press enter and you'll see that it's pinging www.google.co.uk and it's saying that it's sending out a certain amount of data and is receiving this much data. And if you find that parts of the data have been lost, then that means that something's gone wrong in the process. And and you should and you should either retry it or the your Pi is not connected to the internet or the the server is down. So that's going to be all for this 
tutorial. If you want any uh, me to go over anything else in my next Linux Basics tutorial, then please, please email me at theraspberrypi@gmail.com. It's worth noting that my logo competition is still running. If you can call it a competition, um, I've had a few people contact me on logo ideas, or one person has even emailed me a logo, which is really good. And um, it's going to be running for a couple more weeks, and uh, I'll just see what logos I have at the end of it because I'm not particularly happy with my logo. So if you could send me a email with a logo or logo suggestion, I'd be really grateful. And um, it's worth checking out the Magpie, in which I've got an article in the November issue on overclocking your Pi. It's entitled Turbo Pi, and I'm going to be in the upcoming Magpie as well in the December issue, and which I'll have an SSH spread. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any other ideas for any tutorials, as I said, email me. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.